Welcome to part one of the nomenclature notes. This unit happens to fall over Thanksgiving break, so we're actually going to break it in half. Uh, before Thanksgiving, we're just going to do the nomenclature, naming. Uh, nomenclature is a fancy word for naming and writing formulas. Uh, and then after Thanksgiving break, we'll do the math portion of it, and then we'll have a test over all of it. So we're going to do the naming, writing formulas. Uh, right before Thanksgiving, we'll take a quiz over that. Um, and then we'll finish the rest of the chapter when we get back from Thanksgiving. Um, this is a very important unit because once we learn how to name and write formulas, you are expected to do it for the rest of the year. And we are going to have a series of weekly quizzes to make sure um, that you have it down. So it's just best to learn it right the first time and practice, practice, practice. I can't say enough about practice, practice, practice. Okay? So the first part is the easiest part, naming molecular compounds. And remember, when we're talking about molecular compounds, we are talking about covalently bonded because it's two nonmetals, and they're called molecules, so we refer to them as molecular compounds. They are the easiest to name because they use a prefix system. The reason that they use a prefix system is because they are sharing their electrons, they can go together in a variety of ways. So when they're bonded, we actually have to tell you how many we have bonded together. Okay? So these you're just going to have to memorize. Mono means one, di two, tri three, tetra four, penta five, hexa is six, hepta seven, octa eight, nona nine, and deca ten. And frankly, the ones that kids have the most trouble remembering um, because they don't make sense with their geometry is the tetra and the hepta. Uh, they tend to get those, they, they, they want to do quad for four and then they don't even know what seven is most of the time. So you're just going to have to memorize these. So first part is how do we write a formula when we are given the name? So let's do that on the next slide. So when we are writing formulas from the name, we are simply going to write what it says, okay? So in this case, we have an example of phosphorus chloride. That means phosphorus is a P. We have five chlorides, so we put the five behind it, okay? Water is actually called dihydrogen monoxide. We normally don't ever call it that, but its formal name would be dihydrogen monoxide. So let's do a couple of these. We have nitrogen tetrasulfide. So nitrogen would just be our N. And then we have sulfur for sulfide. And then tetra means four. So we would have NS4. And that would be its formula. Uh, next to that is carbon dioxide. That one we're pretty familiar with because we've seen it for a long time, but it's CO2. Um, oxygen monofluoride would be an oxygen. Mono means one, so it's an F. Sulfur, S. Hexachloride is six. So we'd have Cl6. And when we're writing the, sub, the subscripts for how many atoms, it always has to be down low. Don't put it up high, put it down low. Uh, tri oxygen, so that means oxygen is three. Deca nitride, nitride excuse me, is N, and then deca was 10. And then we have tetrafluorine, so we would have F4. Monophosphide, mono means one, so we would just have a P. Hexafluorine, known as sulfide, and heptabromine, octanitride. Y'all try that for a second. And then if you did that correctly, you should have had F6S9, and then heptabromine would be Br. 7, octanitride would be N8. Now many of these compounds don't actually exist. I'm literally throwing them on there so you can practice with the prefix systems. Okay? So let's see how we would write the names from the formulas now. So writing the names is just slightly more complicated, but not really that much. So writing the names, there's a couple of things. The less electronegative element will always be given first, okay? Um, the exception of that is when you have carbon listed. Uh, it is a given, a prefix only, the first thing is only given a prefix if there's more than one. Only if there's more than one, okay? So let's highlight that. Only if there is more than one. If not, we just state this, the element's name, okay? 
So it keeps its name. It does not change the prefix. You may have noticed, I mean, not change the ending. You may have noticed that uh, when we were writing the formulas from the names. It's always the same name, okay? Um, the second element is named by combining a prefix. It always gets a prefix. So write that in there. Always gets a prefix. Whoops, you can't really write with the highlighter very well. So it always gets a prefix. The second item always gets a prefix. Even if it's one, then it's mono. Um, and then we change the ending to IDE. Okay? If we have something that ends in an A or an O, at the end of the prefix, we usually drop that. So an example of that would be monoxide and pentoxide. We wouldn't write mono and then oxide because it looks funny. So we would drop that um, O and call it monoxide. Okay? Here are some common root words. Um, that you're going to change things to. So if you have hydrogen, you would call it hydride. If you had fluorine, you would call fluoride. Uh, nitrogen would be nitride. So this is just kind of to help you out with that. So let's practice writing some names from formulas. So here we have carbon. We have CCL4. So we know that the first thing is carbon. So we would write carbon. And then we see that we have four. Four means tetra. So we would say tetra chloride. We change the ending to IDE. Uh, next one would be nitrogen. So we just write nitrogen. Then we have three fluorides. So we would say tri fluoride. And spelling is going to be important when we do those naming quizzes, so make sure you get used to spelling fluoride. Everybody tries to do O-U, and it's U-O, okay? So then we have PBr5, so that would be phosphorus. Bromide. Oops, excuse me. See, I almost made a mistake. Let's erase that. It would be pentabromide. And I spelled phosphorus wrong. I need to add that O back in there. Okay? Um, I want you to pause the video, and I want you to do the next three, and then come back. Okay, how'd you do on those three? So the next one we have, it's the first time we have a um, subscript on our first element. So because it's two right here, we have to say di-nitrogen. That's an O. And then the second thing always gets a prefix, even if there's only one. So it would be dinitrogen monoxide. And that's an example of where we drop the extra O off. Okay? And then the last one would be phosphorus hexafluoride. Okay? So your homework is just that one little sheet where you're going to, half of them are naming and half of them are writing. Uh, you shouldn't have any problem with this, but I'm going to caution you this. It's, it's really easy, and you'll get this down, but when we get to ionic, we will not be using prefixes. So only get used to doing prefixes when you see two non-metals together. Uh, in your notes, I have an extra practice sheet um, if you want to practice a little bit more. If you do that, uh, and then you want me to look at it in class, I would be happy to. So that is the end of this lesson.